action in celebration of the 60th anniversary of our country. The Crown of the East will represent Chinese wisdom in urban development. Discover great expectations from companies that will participate in the upcoming event. Visit a Shanghai family to see how eating habits have changed during the past six decades. China change your life change. Welcome to this edition of Expo Connection. I'm Lisa Jia. As Thursday is our long-awaited National Day, the 60th anniversary of our country. So today we'll talk about the 2010 Expo's China National Pavilion. In fact, today we'll review the inner design of the building, since many of you are already familiar with the facade. How have the first-class designers interpreted the theme of Chinese wisdom in urban development? Will it live up to expectations? It's your turn to decide. The National Pavilion of China is designed in the shape of an Oriental crown. It features the same color red that is found in the Forbidden City. This vermilion color embodies the spirit of Chinese culture. The design for the pavilion's interior was selected from 17 plans from home and abroad. Another theme: Chinese wisdom in urban development. Designers will showcase the wisdom of Chinese people in urban construction in the three-story building, starting from ancient times and then transitioning to the future. I'm now on the third floor, 49 meters above the ground, and this is the place where visitors will begin their journey. The theme of this 8,500 square meter section is the footprint of the East. After arriving by elevators, visitors will first see an introductory movie by award-winning director Lu Chuan. Lu Chuan is known for his film *Ke Ke Xi Li: Mountain Patrol*, which won a Golden Horse Best Picture Award in 2004 at a film festival in Taiwan. His latest production is the shocking *City of Life and Death*, known as *Nanjing Nanjing* in Chinese. His eight-minute film for the expo will display China's urbanization in the past 30 years. 之前两部电影其实，呃，风格都比较纪实，但这次不是。我觉得我们定调是一种诗意展现。诗意展现的话，就会有很多，呃，超出现实生活那种有想象力的那种奇观。大家可以看到很很震撼的那种奇观。原来是想找一线的明星。还有一套方案呢，是找全部的新人。呃，现在我们逐渐在倾向于后者，更希望在这样一部呃影片中间，能够去把一张张新的面孔、新的那种力量展现出来。所以我们现在其实是在做海选的工作，已经看了三三五三千到五千名新的演员。After the movie, visitors will be transported back into history and enjoy a 100-meter-long projection of the panoramic painting along the river during the Qingming Festival. The original version of "Along the River During the Qingming Festival" is more than five meters long. It is generally attributed to the Song Dynasty, about 1,000 years ago. The painting captures the daily life of people in the capital, Beijing. It is so famous that it has been called China's Mona Lisa. Modern multimedia technology will bring all the painting's characters to life. 当时的汴京是世界上最繁华的城市，就像现在的纽约一样。它其实画的不是最繁华的地区，它是靠近城乡交接处，但是也能够。反映出当时的繁华，因为很多很多的小人哎，那么我们会把它做得非常有趣，哎，让大家能够感受到，哎呦，这个一千年前的城市已经那么有好玩了啊，那么有意思了。Transitioning from ancient history into the present, visitors will enter modern China on the second floor and embark on the journey of wisdom. Visitors will ride a cable car for a 10-minute trip along an elevated zigzag rail.
The journey is in a dreamlike hall with green background. On the projected screens, visitors will see firsthand how Chinese cities and the countryside can seamlessly blend together. We will use some shells, stones, Xi方包括这个西腊包括这个埃及都是石头建筑为主 in this journey of wisdom, visitors will also see China's four great inventions. That's the compass, paper, printing press, and the gunpowder. And that's all for this level. And now let's explore the first floor. The theme of the 33-meter-high ground floor is Blossoming City. It will show visitors how the Chinese people are currently using ingenuity to address future challenges in urbanization technologies that reduce carbon dioxide emissions and encourage non-polluting new energies will be on display. And water will flow through all three stories. To visit, the whole three-story pavilion will take about 45 minutes, and the organizers are expecting up to 50,000 visitors every day. And in order to avoid the long queues, visitors are required to make reservations in advance. Expo organizers are also considering extending the exhibition after the expo ends in order to let more people to know about Chinese wisdom. Welcome to the show, Ms. Chen. The corporate pavilion has always been a highlight ever since its first appearance in the 1933 Chicago World Fair. So what can we expect in the upcoming 2010 Expo event for those corporate pavilions? Future lights. Future lights. Yes. Every year, as you mentioned, uh, the corporate pavilion in Ch Chicago Expo, uh, one of them is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, General Motors pavilion. And uh, they expected uh, the future transportation uh, in 20 years from that year. And uh, the main idea is the highway. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes true. Different pavilions have their uh, point of view to show the future lives. Uh, one of the pavilions shows 2020's life for, for the smart and the connected uh, uh, urban life. Mm -hmm. And we also have the automobile uh, pavilions will show us another 20 years uh, in the future how we uh, moved after 20 years, that means 2030. And uh, I know the story of Wang Ke Pavilion mm -hmm. is about 2049. Okay. Yes, uh, I, uh, I asked Mr. Wang why they chose this year, because that's 100 years for, for our country. So I think uh, it's uh, all about future lives. As you just mentioned, like Yuan Da, like Wan Ke, um, I also noticed that among all those 17 corporate pavilions, most of them are, or let's say majority of them are domestic companies instead of the, the overseas one. But comparatively speaking, compared to overseas companies, perhaps most of them lack the experience of participating in the previous expos. So as organizers, um, how do you plan to help them or assist them to better exhibit themselves or display themselves in the expo event? Most, most of our jobs is service. 
to service them on site mm -hmm. from the construction start. Uh, as you know, we are also our uh, facility. A lot of our uh, service facilities are also under construction in the same time. But we try to find some space for them to as a temporary uh, facility space for every uh, pavilion. And sometimes we need to move again and again because we we also need to finish our job in the same time. So that's the, uh, the, the, the most important thing is to service them. And most of them already start their construction. Earliest one is the, the shipping pavilion. They start uh, from uh, February this year, and they already, in the last, uh, last period for their structural uh, construction, and uh, they will start their exhibition arrangement very soon end of this month or early next month. Can you briefly introduce us a little bit about the Zone B and E of the Expo site? I think the first thing I need to say is uh, Zone B and E is in Pushi site. We have 17 corporate pavilions and uh, two, uh, one uh, Mansin pavilion and another is the Expo Museum. 19 uh, pavilions till now. Why I said till now, that's because we may We'll have another new uh, participants very soon, so maybe we will have 20 together. As you said, there is some distance between the Pushi and Pudong Expo site. Do you have shuttle buses? So what is the detailed plan on the transportation on the visiting flow? Firstly, is, uh, as you know, the shuttle bus. We, have, we will have uh, around 110 buses used for this uh, uh, cross river shuttle bus that could hold around uh, 18,000 people per hour. Mm -hmm. And the second, we have a subway. Uh, line 13, as you know, that's the special uh, subway for Expo. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could hold around 35,000 people per hour across uh, the river. And third, uh, they have very good. So the biggest uh, capability, I think, is around 20,000 per hour. So that means totally together we could hold around uh, eight, 80,000 people uh, per hour across the river. I, I think that's enough, because the space in Pussy side uh, was designed uh, as uh, 30 percent for visitors, so I, I think that's enough. Welcome back to Expo Connection. There is an old Chinese saying that "Ming yi shi wei tian," which means that Chinese people regard food as their primary need. In the past several decades, great changes have taken place with regards to food culture as well as our daily routines. So today, our guest host will visit an ordinary Shanghai family to learn more about the changes and their eating habits. Well, I've been invited by my friends to go over to their house and have dinner. But you know what? I've just realized that I have not brought anything to take to their house. You know, when you go to someone's house, you should bring something. So I might need to buy something. Huh? Hey! Uh, okay. Hey! well, I've arrived at one of the local uh, supermarkets to see if I can buy some great sumptuous food and cook them up a sumptuous meal. Come on. Alright, I'm done. I've got all I need. Now it's time to go back and cook up a storm. 
，哎，回来了，对，都买好了。好的，哎呦，哎，我们看一下啊，好，给你看一下。哎呦，你看啊，买了很多肉，怎么样？呀，你买了怎么那么多的肉啊？对呀、啊，我现在还有谁吃肉都吃素菜了要啊？从前啊，都想吃肉吃不着，真的、啊。哎，后来呢，都吃肉，又要那个肥胖，嗯、现在。这个肉啊，都没人想吃，都想吃一点环保型的蔬菜。那怎么办呀？我们再去买些素菜好吗？好呀，啊、嗯，那人家他们要发现了，我们就、嗯、那我们赶快去吧。好，嗯，好的。好，那我们回来了。<笑>哎呦，那现在就买菜啊，买菜。那你、呃、啊，现在呢都是我们买的都是这些那个绿色的环保产品，那个啊，那个八八年那个。车篮子工程啊，嗯，现在生活条件都赶上了，很漂亮，哎、呃，很漂亮，这些菜你看。那你你小的时候，小的时候我们都是吃的胡萝卜，胡萝卜，啊、呃，还有那个那个黄豆，黄豆，就只有青菜，哎呦，哎，其他都没有什么好吃的，真的，现在的生活，现在就不得了，很丰富的，哎、呃。好，那我们两个菜又。我们再去买,买点鱼，鱼，回去那个做一做。好，那个你喜欢是吗？喜欢，可以啊。走，啊、哦，你看看这条可以不？哎呦，这个好，你看尾巴不错。啊、哎呦，也很活泼的。嗯、啊，来，活泼的，来。<笑>谢谢。咱们开车回家吧。好，我们都买好了，啊、太好了、啊，我饿死了。哎呦，菜也都买了，但是我发现了。我们喊了蛮长时间，对吧？大家都都肚子应该饿死了，怎么办呀？就是要要不，那怎么办呢？<笑>要不菜先放冰箱，我们叫点外卖，给你填肚子。<笑>好呀，啊、<笑>那那就哪天开餐。好了，来来来来来，那你你为什么那个平时会不会就是按照什么情况来点？平常一点呀、啊，像那个工作忙来吃饭，嗯。嗯天气不好，我们就拎点东西吃呗、嗯。其实蛮方便的。嗯，是很方便。啊，那看看味道啊。你们在看什么？哎、啊，披萨。披萨，披萨，中国的大饼呀。哎，什么？我去教你做呀。做披萨呀？啊，是的。中国的已经。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中国的大饼。中
So far, 179 companies, including Roche and General Electric, have submitted proposals for the pavilion. General Motors Company has recently announced the establishment of its China Science Lab in Shanghai. It's the first major science lab established by a global automaker in China. The vision of the lab is to be recognized as a world-class R&D organization that will help drive GM's automotive business into the future. The lab's initial focus will be on research related to advanced propulsion technology and adjoining technology. It will also focus on battery cells, mega city safety research, advanced vehicle development, and light material. During next year's expo in the SAIC GM pavilion, visitors will see what vehicles might look like in 2013. GM leaders say the China Science Lab would also contribute to the expo. The expo work we're, we're focusing on alternative solutions and creating that vision. The lab's going to continue to do the real work of developing the technologies uh, that are needed to be able to make that a reality. Shanghai's foreign language TV channel, International Channel Shanghai or ICS, attracted quite a number of visitors on the three-day expat show in the city. Hosts and the creative minds behind some hit shows mingled with audience at ICS booth and all enjoyed a range of interactive activities together. The exhibition was broken down into four areas, including finance, tourism, lifestyle, and entertainment for expats in Shanghai. As this year's show comes to an end, Shanghai sees a growing expat community for more than 100,000, and the number is expected to reach 150,000 next year. After two months' construction, the foundation of the U.S. pavilion is finished and the main pillars were up. The pavilion will show the country's history and its future, depicting what America may look like in 2030. To make that come true, U.S. officials set a $61 million US dollars budget for the construction, and two-thirds of the money is already in place. And officials are quite optimistic when they are still searching for sponsors for the remainder. Well, that's all we have for this edition of Expo Connection. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We value your feedback, so please drop us a line via Expo Connection at ics.smd.cn or visit our website, icsexpo.bbtv.cn. And we will now leave you with the latest progress at the Expo site. I'm Lisa Jupp. See you at the same time next week. Goodbye.